Adler leaned forward and looked at the ground below. He was searching for some sign that George jumped down. But at a glance, he didn't see any mark like that on the grass in the middle of the pouring rain. <laughs> Battler closed the window and locked it, so this was perfectly obvious. <laughs> Nanjo turned pale and shook his head several times. Because the thing Battler had said had forced him in to face a fact that was frightening even to imagine. Didn't want to say it in front of Nanjo, but after eliminating Jessica who had been with him the whole time, only Nanjo and Eva could have done it. Come on, we know Eva want to kill her son. それぞれを別々に監禁すれば良いだけの話。逆に言えば、このトリックはもっと生存者が多ければ有効かもしれないが、これだけ人数が減った状況下では、大して有効ではないんだ。Now, on the contrary, there'd be a chance of having your own neck strangled by using it. It would have been more advantageous to make it look like the culprit was outside, to intentionally leave a door unlocked or break a window. もしこの失踪劇が今日の昼にでも俺は自信満々にこの説を発表しただろうよ。だがこの難解に至っては何なんだこいつは。一体何を意味してやがるんだ。この密室はよ。いや、いやはりその。うん。なんだい、南条先生
In this way, the four of us decided to leave the guest house. Even though it should have been it should have been safe to barricade ourselves here. We lost eight people after doing so. It's almost as though it's almost as though this was a holding cell from which the sacrifices could be killed one after another. We removed the chain, unlocked the front door, and opened it. It was already pitch black. While there were some lights outside that dimly lit the pathway, they didn't have enough power to pierce the darkness that some suspicious person might be hiding in. Still holding her gun, Anna Ava dashed out without an umbrella. Jessica followed after her. After glancing at each other, Dr. Nanjo and I chased after them. Nanjo's gonna get left in the fucking dust. What in the world is happening in this mansion on this island? I've just been shut up in the guest house with the rest of the cousins since yesterday. So I don't know anything about what's going on outside. Just what is happening that I don't know about? Outside this room, in the mansion, on this island. Everything is happening, everything is proceeding, and everything is ending without my knowing it. Somewhere in my heart, I've already started giving up. Most likely, not one of us will see tomorrow morning. When the seagulls cry, nobody will be left alive. Oh yeah? Let's see how it all comes to a close then. Iron right, shit, it's only like 6 o'clock. <laughs> the last couple of nights always, yo, ended at like, yo, midnight, you know? Was it? Well, I know the first one was. The second one at midnight, I'm pretty sure it was like the fe like the festival or whatever started at midnight, I think. But then again, <laughs> like the, yo, the new Beatrice gives a shit about tradition or ceremony or anything like that. Ah, so we found the corpses. Jessica's woeful voice echoed throughout the rose garden. Oh, did they find them immediately outside? Perhaps it was the intuition of a person who lived on this island. After checking the part of the rose garden where Aunt Rose and Maria had fallen and seeing nothing, Jessica went to look in the arbor next. Normally, the arbor was probably a wonderful location to enjoy tea peacefully while appreciating the roses on a good sunny day. Maybe even a good place to propose to your girlfriend or something. Maybe even Uncle Krause and Aunt Nazi had days when they relaxed and enjoyed their tea together here. In that arbor lay their corpses. At least they aren't drenched in the rain like Aunt Rose and Maria had been. There was no way I could say that out loud to Jessica at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right there, lay two stake-like weapons decorated with an occult design, which had been found driven into Uncle Krause's thigh area, and near Aunt Nazi's calf. When we found these sticking out of my parents' forehead and chest, we decided to preserve the crime scene and leave them for the police. But Jessica didn't care about such matters and immediately pulled the stakes out of her parents' forsaken bodies. Yeah, I I'm sure you'll really stack up against him. When like three other adults carrying guns couldn't do it, all the other yo adults that are, yo, in a physical sense, way more strong than you. Like, come on, come on. Come on, let's check their body count, Jessica. Let's check their body count. Come with me. Let's check their body count here, alright? So, uh, Kinzo, you think you're stronger than Kinzo? Okay. Uh, Kraus, with a gun, think you're stronger than? Interesting. Nazi, think you're stronger than? Mm hmm. Hideyoshi, just base Hideyoshi is, yo, no way, but Hideyoshi with a gun? Pfft. Rudolph, with a gun? No, in either sense. Kirie, especially not with a guy. I mean, Jesus Christ, you're nowhere near Kirie. Kirie is. I, there's something going on with Kirie. There's definitely something going on there. Like something not normal. Not just the fact that I suspect her for killing Bettler's mom, but 
something not right with her. Genji, no way you're stronger than Genji. Rosa, maybe. Shannon, nah, Shannon was a servant. She's definitely pulling her weight around this place. You you wouldn't tap that. Kanon, like I said, he may seem scrawny, but he was a servant who could pull his weight. He did. He definitely, you know, hold his own. Goda, oh, no way are you stronger than Goda. Not a chance. Akumasa was probably the only one on this list. I'd be like, yeah, no, you're definitely stronger then. And also, while I have this open. His corpse was found in the Rose Garden Arbor. The cause of his death is soon to be strangling with a rope-like object. A stake-shaped weapon was sticking out of his thigh. If only there wasn't that stupid epitaph, and would have needed a stake. What a pain. Bitch. Her corpse was found in the Rose Garden Arbor. Why do I even have to follow the epitaph in the first place? Is this some kind of game? Shut up. <sighs> anything new over here? I don't think so, but I'll check. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything new. But I thought it was anything Nazi. Then, we don't know about George. He definitely exists. At some point. Anyway. <laughs> Forward we go. Jessica, do I need to pull up the body count again? Jessica, I, I get it. You're angry, so you're just popping off, but you gotta think about it. You're literally the weakest link here. I know you like to talk big, but like, Ann Ava, listen, we already know, she's got martial arts training. We learned that from the very first episode, alright? But now she has a gun. She has a gun and she can do martial arts. Like, you're, you're not stronger than Ava. Battler, when it comes to like, raw physical strength, nah. We already saw that in episode one. He beats you in a test of strength. So then Nanjo, like, maybe. Like, I don't know just how strong Jessica can be, but, uh, you know, Nanjo, he's a bit old, looks like he's definitely put on a few pounds. Probably not the spry young man he used to be, but, like, that one's questionable. Like, you could debate that Nanjo could probably win, alright? So I don't know why you gotta act like a bad bitch all the time when you're, like, what? Bring up the fucking menu again. Just overall, overall, look at all these people. And how many do you think Jessica can be? Rosa, maybe. But definitely not Rosa with a gun, alright? Unarmed Jessica versus armed Rosa, not happening, alright? Shannon, uh, that's a close one. I give it to Shannon, though, because of the work she puts in as a servant. Kumasawa is, like, the only one I can say for certain that Jessica could beat. That's the only one for sure. Shannon Rosa, maybe. Not very likely, though. Like, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel, Jessica. You gotta stop acting like tough shit. Think of it more realistically. Jesus. You won't do shit! You definitely won't. I need someone to, like, yo, know, just give her a nice little slap on the cheek and say, Hey, Jessica, you won't do shit. Jessica let her emotions flow out as she howled furiously. To avoid being crushed by grief, she could do nothing but resist it with anger. Ava, you know what happened. Nah, we all move as one. She's probably doing it because she doesn't want the others to see her reaction to it. Then Ava screamed this. Jessica glared at her. Ava had no more time to bother about the dead. Can't really blame her there. She's more concerned for the safety of her only son, who had yet to be seen. Hey, Jessica, stay all alone by yourself in this nice little secluded area where there's clearly corpses, so we know the murderer's been here. Have fun! You know that's not happening. After arbitrarily saying this, Anne Ava rushed out of the arbor. 
<laughs> arbitrarily. <laughs> I'm funny. I called out to stop her, but there was no way she would listen. However, being alone in this situation meant nothing short of death. If we silently watched her leave, it would be the same as letting her die. Since Aunt Ava was unwilling to stop, we had no choice but to follow her. And, while it may be cruel to say so, Uncle Krauss and Aunt Nazi were already dead. So there's nothing more we could do for them. True, true. In the end, we had no choice but to console Jessica and head for the mansion together. Fortunately, Jessica stood up. Perhaps she had been able to break free from her grief. But what had surfaced in his place when his, was an expression like a demon's. You won't. You fucking won't. Even if they were human, you know? <laughs> like, it's bad enough that you're thinking of challenging a witch. And not only a witch, the brutal witch. Which I call a bitch for short. Like, you ain't gonna do shit. You ain't gonna, like, even if it was just a human. Even if it was just a human. And maybe it is. I don't fucking know at this point. You think I know anything that's going on? Fuck no. But even if it is just a human, you don't stand a fucking chance. Look at the shit they've been doing. You think you stand a fucking chance? Yeah, you got damn right mind. I, I get it. It's her emotions taking control of her. She's not thinking logically. She's not thinking straight. But still, come on. You gotta face reality here. I get it, yo. They killed my parents, so I must fucking kill them in return. Eye for an eye. Blood for blood. I get it. I get it. I get the mentality. I do. You're not cut out for the job. <laughs> you, you gotta realize, in all your age, you're not cut out for the job. Maybe if you had a gun, you know what, I'd have more faith in you. If you somehow got a hold of Ava's gun, then I'd be like, okay, maybe you could. If it was a human, you'd definitely stay at a chance. For sure. But you, unarmed, going up against anything? Nah. Nah. Don't act like tough shit. Fuck you. <laughs> They're gonna find Ava Beatrice and then <laughs> she's just gonna charge her and die instantly. <laughs> and then Nandra's gonna be like, well, just I'll leave you guys to it. You, uh, that's right, go, uh, Yo, get your justice via homicide. Have fun. <laughs> and my words, Jessica finally seemed to feel like we sympathized with her emotions. She still had that dark expression, but felt that Jessica had regained some of her sanity. We took off, chasing after Aunt Ava. Through the rose garden, up the stone steps, running at full speed toward the mansion, whose large, intimidating shadow flashed in the lightning. With this, the murders of the epitaph have reached the eighth twilight. And then, on the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive. None shall be left alive. I will most likely lose my life. But at the very least, I want to burn the truth into my eyes. It's the only thing motivating me to move right now. Fair. We were able to meet up with Aunt Ava, who was having trouble with the lock to the front door. It seemed that all the blood had risen to Aunt Ava's head. That was probably making her fingers clumsy. Looked like she couldn't even handle the simple task of inserting the key into the lock. And there was a faint sound. The sound of the door unlocking. Just though it had waited for all the survivors to unite before opening. Of course. It felt to me as though the malicious mansion was trying to swallow up all the remaining humans at once. I told you. Monster house. Perhaps that the stench that erupted to outwards the instant the door opened. Couldn't be described as just a smell. It wasn't just the charred smell from grandfather. I think it also may have contained the regrets of the servants and dad's group. All of the dead. What did it mean as it floated out, overwhelming us? Was it the cry of the dead telling us not to enter? However, Aunt Ava didn't even flinch at something like that. And we who had to chase after her were forced to step into the mansion, even after receiving that message. And Ava shouted at the top of her lungs. 
Considering the situation, it's probably far too optimistic to imagine that he's alive. When we started following Aunt Ava's example and calling out George's name in loud voices, Aunt Ava spotted something and stopped walking. She was standing in front of the door to the parlor. What is it? It's some memento of George's, right? I heard about the eerie magic circles written on doors. Oh, like the one on the parlor from the adults. Eerie is the only word to describe that thing, which was scribbled with a deep red paint, reminiscent of blood, that slowly dripped down. However, that had supposedly been there since this morning. Wondering why Aunt Ava, who had supposedly seen it already, would think it odd now. Jessica and I stared at the door. Oh. Both the two of them said only the magic circle had been there this morning. However, right now there were eight digits written near the upper part of the magic circle. Oh, seven one five one one two nine. Is that like a code? Wink, 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 wink. Wink, you bastard. There we go. Wink, wink. There we go. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant. But I didn't even want to imagine what someone had been thinking when they wrote it. Don't codes, wink, wink, usually come in like six digits. So it wouldn't work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm definitely not looking anything up. Yeah, 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 six digits or less. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. I thought I, I thought it was six digits. So what if I entered those first six digits? I'm curious. I'm curious. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna find out what the sauce is on those first six digits. God help me. Don't ask me why I'm doing this. But I'm a man with a mission. Okay, let's try the last six. One, five, one. One, two, nine. Is that real? Oh, it is. Oh! It's a Steins Gate thing. Interesting. Uh, that's, that's interesting that the last six digits leads to something based on another uh, visual novel. Interesting. Okay. Well, you learn something new every day. It was drawn with the same paint as the magic circle, but it had clearly been written very recently. The way it had dried and the condition of the color was completely different from the magic circle part. No. Is it some kind of like cipher? Where like each letter stands for a certain number? Maybe? I don't know. <laughs> What now? Just intentionally spat those words out in an attempt to push aside the eerie feeling it gave off. Ma魔法人という あれは地殻圏の中に埋めた数字の話じゃなかった。これは横一列だもの。何の意味があるのかさっぱりだわ。多分ジェシカちゃんの言うのが正確。私たちが深く考えたところで。Unless there was。Even though she said that, she probably suspected that it actually meant something. And Ava was definitely writing that number down on an old receipt or something with a short ballpoint pen. Unless that's some obvious pattern, it'd probably be tough to memorize a code made up of an eight-digit number. I forgot the code. God damn it. And it's not gonna be written down anywhere. Damn it, okay, it's not written down. Okay, well, tell me what the date might be, because I don't actually remember the code. No. Hinichi? 
Ah, there we are. July 15th, 1129. Or is it like uh, a start date and an end date? July 15th to November 29th. Maybe? If we're assuming it is a date. Oh. Hey, Jessica. ゼロ I'm guessing it's either George's or Ava's. Oh, never mind. Eleven twenty-nine. Interesting. Maybe it's Beatrice's birthday. Rosa and Maria are not the same. Our family is different. Okay, so it's known from the Ushiromia family. So I'm guessing it's connected to Beatrice somehow. I'm just started imagining that the eight digits weren't meaningless. But actually, two dates written together really started to look that way. However, its true meaning may be something completely different, or there may be no meaning to it at all. Anyway, since we don't have any real clue, it's probably pointless to stand around here worrying about it. The inside of the parlor is much more important. This morning, behind each of the doors with a magic circle drawn on them, had been the body of a victim. So if something had been added to this door, does that mean something new has been added inside the parlor? When Aunt Ava tried to open it, she felt the resistance of the lock. She immediately took out a master key and put it in the keyhole. 